going on, YouTube? Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. Now, the question that I have for the Auburn fan base when they really look at where Auburn is as a program, is Auburn with or can they compete regularly with the high-tier teams of the SEC? I'm talking Georgia, LSU, and Alabama. Now, Texas A&M has had some pretty decent recruiting classes, but let's let's just really look at this uh, from an objective standpoint. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Now, the Auburn Tigers are in that usual middle tier of the SEC. And I'm going to tell you where this middle tier lies. This middle tier is to where they can compete with Alabama LSU, Georgia, usually they can't beat all three of them. They can usually go one and two against them, and then maybe on a good year, like, say, 2017, they can go two and one. But consistently, they can go either one and two and zero oh and three. The main reason for that we're going to get to in the latter part of this particular video now, when you look at where Auburn sits in the middle tier, in the upper middle tier, they usually have enough talent to beat the Mississippi States, the Texas A&Ms, the South Carolinas, the Kentuckys of the SEC. But then when you get into the Floridas and the LSU, the Georgia, the Alabama, that's where things get a little tricky for the Auburn Tigers, mainly for several reasons. One is recruiting. If you look at the past few recruiting classes, even when Auburn was in, say, the top six, there's usually one player that's a top five, that, that's a top recruit, say Cal Calvin Ashley from a couple of years ago, that catapults the recruiting class but doesn't signify the quality of the class, okay? So that's why you have this situation to where, okay, Auburn is pretty good for, you know, 2013 when everybody's a, are, are seniors. Then you get 2014 when the team is pieced together by, you know, junior college transfers, things of that nature. Then you get 2016 where one running back goes down, the quarterback goes down, and all of a sudden the, you know, team falls apart. 2017, the running back goes down. You can't win the SEC championship. 2018, the offensive line absolutely sucks. So you miss out an opportunity there. 2019, you know, you have a freshman quarterback. You have a piece together second, secondary as far as cornerbacks goes. So even still with all of that, Auburn is right there. Auburn is right there from a recruiting standpoint. Now, from a coaching standpoint, how can Auburn compete in past years? Defensively, Auburn has, cons can, has considerably upgraded their staff each year. I think now this is the point where Auburn has a very, very solid defensive coaching staff, not even worthy of conversation. But then you talk about offense. Over the past few years, we, we talked about, hey, if Gus Malzahn could put together his offense with even a decent defense, we're talking about a national championship caliber team. But offensively, Gus Malzahn has not delivered. Why has he not delivered? Well, number one is coaching staff. He's had guys who have been terribly inexperienced. He's had guys who are, are just not able, at least at the point of their careers, to develop the talent to the point of his competition. Yeah, he can out-talent Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Texas A&M, and all those other teams. But then when you talk about development to be able to beat a, a Florida or Georgia, LSU, Alabama, not quite there. So we, we fast forward to 2020. Is Auburn there yet? Well, 
this 2020 recruiting class outside of the social distancing and all the development that is going on right now. I think they're they're making strides. I think Gus Malzahn and his staff is learning how to recruit. We talk a lot about about developing players and developing talent. But the thing is, you, you have to have the talent to develop. And I think as it turns out over the past few recruiting classes, 2018, 2019, 2020, I think Gus Malzahn finally has not only the talent, but the depth to start to compete. Is he there yet? I would I would say reluctantly no. But it's trending in the right direction. Because if Auburn is going to compete, for one, they have to understand who they are. And who they are not is a team that can readily attract multiple five-star recruits. So what you have to do is you have to find a way to recruit the middle tier of the four-star recruits, the high-end four-star recruits, which they have done this year. Because if you think about the class of Auburn, they have they have a top 10 class, not a single five-star recruit, but they have a lot of middle tier four-star recruits that will really help them out to, de- to develop um, depth. And also these players, when you have those 92s above in the four-star range, they tend to develop a lot quicker than, say, those guys that Auburn used to recruit, like the Daniel Thomases and the Jeremiah Densons, who take, it takes their junior and senior years before they blossom. So as we start to be honest about where Auburn is as a program, is Auburn a a, a, a high-tier program? I would reluctantly say, Not quite, but are they making strides? Yes, they are. Because if you look at the 2019 season, Auburn, even with all the disarray, all of the inconsistencies on offense, all of the different schematics to where teams could pick apart certain parts of the defense, Auburn had a legitimate chance to win every single game that they played this year. And that's something to put your that's a that's a, you know, a a real huge feather to put in your cap when you talk about Auburn football, because if you look at 2018, you put that team against Alabama. You hang around for a half third quarter, Alabama runs away with the football game. Georgia runs away with the football game in 2018. But no, in 2019, Auburn is down 21 nothing, 21 to 6 with the chance to win the football game late. The only issue now is Georgia is continuing to recruit at a high level. Alabama's going to recruit at a high level until Nick Saban leaves. The mitigating thing for Auburn now is the quarterback situation in the SEC is now somewhat at an even playing field. No more Tua Tugavaloa, no more Jake Fromm, no more Joe Burrow. Those those guys actually took the whole game of the SEC to a high level. So now Auburn is in a situation to where they have the somewhat maybe elite quarterback in the SEC right now. So Auburn has a chance to redeem themselves as far as being at that point of the SEC to where they need to be. Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. Talking Auburn football, go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe. Click the bell twice so that you do not miss any information when we come on. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle.